Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna and today I want to show you how to multiply mixed fractions. We go through these two examples together, so let's start with the first one. We want to multiply 2 and 3 over 4 with 2 and 2 over 3. To do this, we first have to convert these mixed fractions into improper fractions. So we write this as one fraction and then we multiply it with another fraction. How can we convert this now? It's not that difficult. We just take the denominator, it stays the same, the 4. Okay, that was easy. And in the numerator we have we have to multiply this number by the number on the bottom, so 2 times 4. And then we just add the number we haven't used yet, and that's the number on the top, the 3, we just add it. And that's it. Let's take a look at the second fraction here. So we do exactly the same. We keep the denominator, the 3, on the bottom. And in the numerator we multiply these two numbers, so 2 times 3. And then we add the number we haven't used yet, the 2 here on top. We just put it here. That's it. Now let's calculate this. 2 times 4 equals 8, plus 3 equals 11. We keep the 4 on the bottom. And then with our second fraction we have 2 times 3 equals 6, plus 2 equals 8, and the 3 on the bottom. Now we just have two normal fractions that we can multiply, so we could start multiplying, so 11 times 8 and 4 times 3, or to keep the number small we first try to cancel out common factors. So if we see numbers on the top and numbers on the bottom that have common factors like the 8 and the 4, we can cancel out uh, 4 because both numbers are divisible by 4. So 8 divided by 4 equals 2 and 4 divided by 4 equals 1. The 11 and the 3 don't have common factors so we can't do anything else then, but it's not a problem. We just multiply now. So here this number on the top with this number on the top, 11 times 2 equals 22, and on the bottom the same, 1 times 3, we have 3. This is our result now, but since we're working with mixed fractions here, we should take a look if we can convert this fraction into a mixed fraction again. We can do that because the number on the top is larger than the number on the bottom. So this is an improper fraction and every time we have such a thing we can convert it into a mixed fraction. So how do we do it? We've seen that the denominator doesn't change, so the number on the bottom we just have to keep it, the 3, that's the easy part. And to find this big number here in front we have to take a look at how often the 3 fits into the 22. Well the 22 is not divisible by 3, but the next smaller number, the 21, is divisible by 3. How often does the 3 fit into the 21? Well it's 7 times. And then we just have to take a look how many steps are left from the 21 to the 22 and it's just one step and that's the number that comes here on top. So this is our result as a mixed fraction. Let's take a look at the second example then. We have a mixed fraction here and shall multiply it by a normal fraction. Okay, we know how to do that now. We first have to convert the fractions, but only the first one because the second one is already a normal fraction, so we just keep it like this. But here we keep the denominator, the 5, on the bottom and for the numerator we multiply these two numbers, 8 times 5, and add the number we haven't used yet, the 2. So we have 8 times 5 equals 40 plus 2 equals 42 divided by 5 and we want to multiply this by 1 over 7. 
Now we have two normal fractions that we want to multiply. Before starting the multiplication, I would recommend to see if we have common factors that we can cancel out. And the 42 and the 7 are both divisible by 7. So 7 divided by 7 equals 1. 42 divided by 7 equals 6. 6 and 5, they don't have common factors, so that's all we can do. So we start our multiplication. 6 times 1 equals 6. And on the bottom, 5 times 1 equals 5. This is our result again, but now we convert this again into a mixed fraction. We know that the denominator stays the same, so we can write the 5 already here. What about the number in the front? We have to check how often does the 5 fit into the 6. Well, the 6 is not divisible by 5, but the next smaller number, the 5, is. And the 5 fits into the 5 one time. And how many steps do we need to get from the 5 to the 6? It's just one step. And this is the number that goes on top here. And that's our result. I hope this helps to understand this topic. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care.